Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, The Rising of the Shield Hero, Season 3. Uh, yep, Shield Hero, Season 3, Episode 6. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo, and well... Are we on the right show? I, I had to check this. Uh, but no, in, in all seriousness, in the intro, they showed off, um, like, showing off potentially the other, the other hero's pass, uh, that kind of thing, like, uh the respective Japans that they came from, because once again, for anybody who might forget, all the Cardinal Heroes are from different versions of Japan. They are not from the same Japan, say Japan A. They are from Japan A, B, C, and D. Or if you want to go like Rick and Morty, it's now for me C-137. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, so maybe we're going to get some backstory on... Ren, probably, because I, I had to make fun of him and give him the Hank Bencher treatment last week, but um, whatever's going on with that mask, you know, some sort of coercion yeah, coercion magic. Um, something like that could be going on. You know, once again, it's not a good disguise. So... <laughs> yeah, once again, one of them, I don't remember which one. I think it was Ren, but I don't remember exactly. But one of them, their Japan was more sci-fi-esque and, like, had, like, VR technology and stuff like that. Yeah. Because that was, like, the whole thing of when they get teleported in, they get teleported in, and it, like, the whole thing of them having, like, the game HUD, like we see with Naofumi and stuff like that is, like, representative of, like, what their Japan's, like, game HUD would look like, basically. Yeah. Based on, like, their technology and uh, fictional sh uh, shenanigans. Yeah. Like, games and whatnot. Because I remember that was the, dis like, distinct thing that they brought up when they were first, like, talking about and realizing that they were from different Japans was the whole thing of, like, them talking about the fact that they each had different HUDs. Yeah. And how they were all familiar with their own HUD. Some sort of backstory going on here, I assume. Um, that's that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, I did find the keel still with, uh, you know, it's three swords and a shield. But still, <laughs> it's hilarious. I love everything about it. So, whatever may be in store. You know, we talked about it last week. Um, just more politicking, that kind of thing. Uh, bitch is doing her thing, I'm sure, with her unbelievably terrible acting and uh, we still have to get to how the hell she circumvented the slave crest so which could be any myriad of things that we went over so either way uh just go ahead push some buttons and see what's what's up with this so here goes something well we were just talking about this <laughs> yeah. that's why i kind of brought it up dare you put your trust in the shield demon? To be honest, I didn't believe her either at first. But her tears were real. Not yeah, real shit. fake. <laughs> her slave crest. I was thinking about this before, but what no, we might be getting into here, here is... Uh... Here, just like that woman said he'd be. The other hero's dark weapons. <laughs> We still haven't like really seen or heard anything along those lines, but we know the shield had the dark weapon. Yeah. Preserved shield. What's going on? Oh man, it's like every fantasy cave ever You're of all dead. time. Well, well, well. If it isn't the almighty sword hero. This wasn't how it was supposed to be, damn it! Yeah, those sure look like the dark markings to me. Yeah. And the way the cursed shield got activated was when Naofumi was like pushed to his emotional limits. All right, time to die, Cardinal Heroes. Really, we're we're doing this again? Eat this, I say. Or not? No How is this possible? Uh, Motoyasu. Any last words, assassin? That was an incredible scream she let out. The Spear Hero sure is a weird guy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. 
<laughs> so we've met two of the isekai uh, tropes now. Accidentally summoning your, yourself by reading a spellbook and getting sh and getting shanked in the street. So uh, we're, we're we're three out of four on this happening. Is it just I, me or is she going to betray the fuck out of you? I know. Do we have to call Mr. Torg from Borderlands? I mean, seriously. It, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, just Google Torg from Borderlands. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> the guy who does Hercule. It's great. But anyway, yeah, just again, really? Is anybody surprised by that? Um, once again, we get a case of, you know, a, a guy who he pointed out last week edgelord metagamer when the meta strategy doesn't always work plain and simple this isn't a game <laughs> you, you could think you're out leveling something because this world is reasonably similar or almost like a well you could call it even you know like he said it's like the game he played the, this is the world for the most part well there's probably it's, enough it's difference that it's not the same, though. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the world. It could be one percent different, and that makes it different. <laughs> it, it, it's the world. However, it's an actual world. It's not a game that has game balance. Yep. You, you think the spirit tortoise cares that you're level eighty? <laughs> I don't think so. So yeah. Um, that that was a that was an interesting lesson for him in that sense. Um, it, it's kind of interesting that they're kind of blitzing solving the problems with the heroes. You know what I mean? Motiasu was done in an episode. Ren done in an episode. Um, I mean, we're not really solving the problems so much as we are getting them at least on board enough that we could potentially have them become proper characters and have some actual development later down the road. Right. It is going a bit fast, but once again, I, I see it primarily as just we're not really fixing their problems so much as we are stopping their downward, downward spiral and getting them into the actual main cast now, finally. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they weren't supposed to go off and be on their own. They were technically supposed to work together, like the Flolial yeah. Queen was saying. It they weren't supposed to get their own parties together and go take on the spirit tortoise. That's why they lost because it wasn't yeah, the four. Yeah. It's one thing if it was the four of them and their collective parties, but if the four of them aren't there together, then no. <laughs> the whole way that this was supposed to play out is they each get summoned to their own respective kingdom. That kingdom provides them a party. They go out, they train, they get experience and learn how to be a hero themselves. And then whenever a wave comes along or a spirit beast or any sort of major world threat, they all band together into one like superhero party. Yep. But instead we got, they were all summoned to the same place. They all just kind of picked their own parties and then just fucked off into the wilderness. Pretty much. <laughs> and we saw how that turned out. So <laughs> that, that was what it was. Um, turns out there were some bandits. I mean, th these were, we got the super fantasy tropes in this episode. You guys see this? You know how many times we've seen this cave? Ark and Skeletonite walked into this exact cave and fought these exact bandits. <laughs> same guys, pretty much. Same place. It's great. How can you not love everything about that trope? <laughs> It's like, man, I know that cave. We all know it's in that cave. Anyway. So, that that explains that. Um, Age was talking about it mid-episode with the dark weapon stuff. I had totally forgotten about that, because it's been a while, honestly. That, that's kind of what with I the, figured. With the advent right. of Season 2 and how much of a wash that was, I totally forgot about the dark, like, seven deadly sins as they we now know them, I guess, apparently. No, we, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't have the context of them potentially being the seven deadly sins. We just had the concept of cursed weapons back, since back in season one. Yeah. That's kind of what I figured we were leading into here with the whole like 
the way Ren was acting and why he'd be attacking the other heroes and stuff like that. Yeah. Because it just it it stands to reason that if Naofumi's shield has a cursed weapon set uh, has a cursed weapon mode that the others would all have the same because once again they're they're all copies of each other just with different weapons yeah but they all have the same potential and functionalities <laughs> to their weapons indeed so yeah i i totally spaced that uh mode in general or as now for when he points it out it's like the cursed path um it's like a choice. It's one of those things. And you don't really see it a huge amount in just like um, standard gaming where you can, um, you kind of see it in games in like roguelites where you can mm -hmm. say, give up health. Uh, we, we can use Hades for an example in a way. Um, you go see chaos and something bad happens to you for a while, but then you get a buff out of it kind of deal in a way. You have to pay a price yeah. somehow for power whatever it may be in this case it might yeah, not be exactly to... like chaos this this could be something you know you get short-term power for a long-term say maybe like a curse that uh um that's like on now for me right now kind of deal so yeah, the, the way i see these curses is basically like i'm going to sacrifice permanent stats in one department to gain an ability kind of thing yeah. Or, so. or it's going to be I'm going to gain an ability and it's going to be something that's really strong but comes with a massive drawback like Naufami's whole like his execution sentence ability. I don't remember the name of it. It wasn't the guillotine one like he had like uh, the swordsman has here but he had a Naufami had a similar one. Yeah. And, but the drawback for Naufami's was that uh, he basically one shots the opponent but he also basically one shots himself to do it. At some point, it'd be interesting to see, like, um, you know, we talked about the whole, like, seeing the hood and all that stuff in the stat lines. It'd be interesting to see more of, like, uh, their weapon trees and what they're capable of doing. But uh, what we did see here that uh, despite everything, um, Motiyasu was not using lightning magic. This was no. something else. This looked very fairly, like... Uh, Eldric in nature. If you looked at the yeah. uh, the tip of his spear here, it was very Eldric in nature. So he clearly learned from his father, who <laughs> is not his real dad, but he thinks it's it's weird dynamic. I don't even know where to go with this. <laughs> he claims he claims Nalfami is his father because he is he claims he is engaged to Philo, who is Nalfami's daughter. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> As Full points out, he's kind of a weird guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of weird going on with him. So that is what it is. But it does look like he's figured something out and uh, listened to now for me at the very least. So there's that. Um, and as we saw, he handled the assassins like they were nothing. Given, mm -hmm. let's be fair. They were stupid and were focused purely on Ren and Naofumi and just ignored him. So he was able to just be like, yo, dog, from behind. Just boom, double RKO, move on with his day. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, Naofumi points out, wow, he's much faster now. Yeah, I mean, in, even if they weren't really paying attention to him and kind of underestimated him, these were... No, uh, two individuals who have a history of killing heroes. And they were giving Roftalia issues when it was just a straight like 1v1. Yeah. Well, she was still it cursed, was, mind you, but yeah, still. It, it wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't until she, she got decursed that uh she was actually capable of uh beating them. Yep. And well, I guess they're not coming back because they tried to blast off like Team Rocket and Soul Form. And well, unfortunately for them, uh, Raftalia has the Katana Vassal weapon, which destroys souls. So, you know, <laughs> sucks to be them, apparently. Yeah. The, we, still have to see what's up. we still have to see what's up with that whole organization of hero hunters, though. These guys were probably just the first wave. Yeah. So that's definitely uh, still on the table. Um, but yeah, I guess at this point, um, 
I get the feeling the bow hero is probably going to be the uh, the biggest problem because we yeah. are talking about this in between uh, the live reaction and discussion here is well let's take for example let's take for example if Nalfami's wrath and only wrath and we're just speculating here say for the seven deadly sins we have Nalfami's wrath and then the other six are evenly distributed among the other three meaning the other three have two apiece as we saw Ren had greed and gluttony well it's either it's either three of the four heroes have two sins or they all have all of the sins. They just have their own like native sin that they start with. And Nalfamis was wrath and Ren's was uh, greed. Right. So pr presuming that there are trait or sins more predominant to each one of them, uh, we speculated that uh, the bow hero would be sloth and pride. Straight up. Yeah. Because if he's, if he's two, he's sloth and pride. If it's everyone has all of them but starts as one, then he's pride and will probably get sloth as his second. Yep. And then for Genmoto Yasu here, though we may never actually see him hit the point of actually drawing on the cursed weapon, we, we don't we may have already bypassed that with him. Would have been lust prime actually no, not lust primary. He, he, I'm pretty sure he would be envy primary. With lust secondary. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because the the few or we saw the bow hero a few times, but every time he was the he was very prideful, but he was also very lazy. He wanted the strongest group possible, and we know that Risha is competent. Competence not good enough for him. <laughs> he, he he's the other kind of uh, metagamer who wants to surround himself by people who will carry him, so he doesn't have to do as much. <laughs> And he just wants to be, he wants to be the hero and have the best party and just basically walk in and not have to do much effort to still win. Right. And to be fair, he's the only ranged character here, so he already has it easier. <laughs> <laughs> so that that coincides to that pretty well. But um, based on the intro, and we've talked about this before, um, it could be going after him as well. And he he's in the intro. He's the last one that we see her we see her with. So uh, yeah, presumably, I suspect that this is actually something deliberate on her part that she is scheming in some way and like deliberately trying to pull the cursed weapons out. In somehow, yeah. this isn't just this isn't just some like way to get back at now for me. Yeah, because I I, I think. Somebody at some point in season one, don't quote me on this, it, but I vaguely remember because it's been like a year and a half. Uh, thanks, Crunchyroll. I really appreciate that. I was going to talk about something on that slide at some point here in the next two minutes, but I'll just go back to it. Anyway, uh, at some point in season one, I believe w when Naofumi was using the curse shield, somebody mentioned something about it. And I know that's super vague, but somebody mentioned something about the curses and something being something about something. I know. You know what I mean? Not helpful. But I, I vaguely remember somebody mentioning something about the curses doing a thing. So potentially if they're all if all the cursed uh, weapons are drawn out of the cardinal weapons, something could occur. Whatever. Um, so there, there were ramifications to using the cursed uh, power besides just, you know, what would happen to themselves. Yeah, which we'll still we'll have to see. Like, it's, like I said, it's it's still entirely possible that we're dealing with the whole, they all have all seven sins as a potential. Or it's, or now for me could still also be one of the ones that has two, because we kept getting that whole thing of like, the curse shield kept trying to push for basically like a second stage evolution kind of thing. Yeah. But he always kept resisting it. And so we never really got to see what uh, like a further development of the cursed shield would have been. Mm -hmm. Whether it's taking on a new sin or just a different stage of wrath or what. 
based on this, I would assume it's taking on another sin and that basically they all have the potential for all seven sins. And if they manage to unlock all seven sins, then something uh, happens, like they go full Demon King or something. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Demon King, uh, we saw there at the end that uh, Ren got uh, a different flavor of Isekai than Naofumi. He got the uh, yeah. he got the Rimuru treatment of uh, getting Too shanked far. in the street. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, but yeah. So we we got two, we we've got two of the isekai tropes now. We have the accidentally summoning yourself by reading a spell book, and the shanked on the street. Now we like at this point the only one of the like major uh, isekai tropes we're missing is truck coon. Right. <laughs> so, um, out of the two remaining, who do you think got hit by a truck? Is it even a question? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that, that's interesting. I wonder if we're going to get to that for, um, for the other two. I mean, obviously, if there's one that got hit by a truck or a vehicle, uh, it's going to be Motiyasu. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be he's chasing after some girl and that he's obsessing over and he ends up like either saving her from getting hit by a car or blundering into a car himself while trying to obsess over her. Right. So yeah, um this right here, I so random, mind you. Some random guy just out to shank some high school girls. Freaking well, this, rude. This girl that he took the knife for specifically was the one that he had clear interest in in the previous flashback, and, like, he was only interested in trying to invite her over. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you were so gung-ho a minute ago. It's like, yeah, that was when it was just you. <laughs> uh, two's fun, but, like, seven's a crowd, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um... It, yeah, but it'll be interesting if we get any... I don't know if we're going to get any more on, like, their previous lives, because even with Naofumi, like... What, what did we get? Like, he has a sister? That's it? Kind of deal? He was... If, all we really got was, like, basically in the first episode, and now he was basically just fed up with life and didn't really care about anything. And just overall was super freaking just nihilistic and just basically lost interest in everything. Yeah. And then he just re kind of stumbled into the book, and it's like, hey, this is a weird book, and read it and got got himself summoned. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, again, it was a it was an okay enough episode. I mean, it was nothing spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. This was uh, just further proving the point that we kind of had this with Skeletonite in a way where when Ark did his training with... Um, Arian's mother that you know you, you you could have the best equipment in the world the legendary sword thunder fury blessed blade of the wind seeker but if you're not a talented player or just in this case you know person in general swordsman it doesn't matter so <laughs> this yeah, this right here is the best weapon this this you you are your weapon first you need <laughs> the your equipment is just an extension of your body if you're not, you know, fundamentally sound and talented in general, it doesn't really matter. You, people are going to run circles around you just like she did. Yeah, it's one of those things where stats will only take you so far. You still have to know how to use them. Yeah, going forward, it'll, I guess those two will be training together, uh, just like Mochiyasu training by forced cardio. I don't even know what you call that. <laughs> He's never going to catch Philo. We already know that. Well, he might be fast. He's not that fast. But, uh... <laughs> well, he's yeah. not fast enough to catch a freaking <coughs> royal Philolio who uh, wants to get away. Yep. He's a literal magical wind beast. Yep. But yeah. Um, Mythical wind beast at that because once again she's a royal philolio. She's not just a normal philolio. Yeah, going forward, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, this party dynamic works out. And uh, I kind of hope like the bow hero is a little bit more of an endeavor than just like 
you know, they're setting it up the way they're setting it up. It's probably going to be it's bow here is probably going to be at least a several episode thing. Yep. If not the rest of the core. Yeah. It just kind of depends on if they're going to try to do the bow hero plus something else, or if they just want to have the bow hero just be one big endeavor. Yeah. Because there were a couple other characters that we saw in the intro that they still have to get to. Um, there's yeah, the like, we... like there's the woman in the tree, and then like the other like younger girl that um, is just like she looks like another uh, potential demi human or something or just human doesn't matter, just like a, a yeah. younger girl kind of like uh, Atla and Full. Yeah, which we still have to get to. Yeah, we still have the like three major plot threads that need to be wrapped up in in. The twins, uh, the clown, and then friggin' uh, uh, bitch senior. Right. <laughs> so th there's plenty of threads out there. So uh, th there's plenty to get to. And then there's the phoenix on the horizon, obviously. Days are ticking down. So anyway, that's all I got. It was all right. You know, <laughs> yeah, de definitely not uh, early season two, that's for sure. But uh, it is what it is. You got anything else, Age? Um, no, just like I said, this is, we have the major plot thread of Bow Hero coming up, and whatever the hell bitch is scheming. We have then, then we have the three secondary plot threads of the twins catching up, the clown, and whatever the hell the her involvement is with this uh, organization of hero killers. And then freaking uh, bitch senior, yep, and whatever his history is, and how it potentially is going to impact the twins because of the whole thing of like Atla is basically a doppelganger of his sister, apparently, except for the fact that she's demi human. Oh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube beyond have you watching. Always appreciate you stopping by and hanging with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo on this week's Shield Hero. Season 3, Episode 6. So, have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.